Hi everyone. Again, I mentioned I just wanted to do maybe like a little brief uh, overview of some things that I added to the notes. It's just a little bit of computation that I said I was going to leave to you, but I just couldn't leave it undone. Um, so I went ahead and did it. I just want to show it to you. And this is going to be very brief, um, but it's it's hard for me to say goodbye to this class. I only get to teach it every other year. It's definitely the favorite, the uh, my my most favorite class to teach. I um, don't know if you can tell that or not, um, but I do. I love all the classes I teach, but there's something special about this one. Um, something near and dear to my heart. All right, so um, I'm going to do this and. Uh, let me share this with you. And again, um, I'm not going to do any more updates to the notes here at all. Um, this is the last one, and it's it's up up there now. Uh, last time I mentioned, remember we were doing the polyenumeration formula. Why it is you can replace xi with the sum of variables, uh, you know, c1 through cm that represent the colors raised to the i power. And, uh, and somehow that gives a pattern inventory. Um, and I mentioned uh, that I was gonna paste this link to a Wolfram Alpha expansion of this icosahedron version of it with five colors. Um, so you can click on that and it'll take you there automatically. But what I wanted to do, oh yeah, and I mentioned we invented these little polynomials that were kind of like a cycle index polynomial for an individual permutation. And we were just interested in trying to really study each one of those permutation, uh, each one of those cycle index polynomials for a given permutation. And once we understood that well, uh, that's what enabled us to, to really see what's going on with um, uh, with poly as enumeration formula. So uh, this, this thing right here uh, was something I said I was going to put in here, namely that psi of pi, okay, uh, if I have m colors that I'm working with, and remember we're freely assigning these colors and we were talking exclusively about vertices, although the same discussion applies to edges and faces, it's just going to be, be the piece of pi p sub pi that we came up with, and each one of the x is evaluated at m. So that's the direct connection between psi of pi, which counts the number of colorings fixed by pi, and these uh, cycle index terms determined by pi. And we went through these examples right here. And the main thing, uh, the main part of the proof we were looking at was right here. Um, I said, you know, piece of pi, x1 through xk, we just denoted that by x1 to the a1, all the way through xk to the ak. Uh, you know, here xi is a cycle of length i, and ai is the number of those cycles of length i. Therefore, we know that n, the number of vertices, has to be uh, just a1, because each of those one cycles only has one element, plus 2a2, because each each of the A22 cycles has two elements in it, et cetera. Okay, so you have this identity. And the question we were trying to answer was, how many of these M colorings are fixed by pi and have B1 vertices colored C1, B2 co vertices colored C2, right? My colors are C1, C2, all the way through CM, and all the way to BM vertices colored CM, okay? And what we did is we said, well, uh, how do I do this? How do I determine that? Okay, in order to color, and this is, this is, these are like the important paragraphs here to see what's going on. In order to color B1 vertices with color C1, you have to choose some one cycles to color C1. And look, I said, say N11. Okay, since we're working with color one, we're going to have two sub indices, N11. Um, and that N11 could have been anything all the way up to, you know, uh, B1, okay? Uh, and uh, then some number of two cycles, N12, okay, so there's two cycles, we're still dealing with color one, so the first index is one. 
And that N12 could have been anything, right? I just chose one arbitrarily, okay? And of course, what has to be true? Well, um, so here we're only dealing with color one. B1 had better be equal to N11. That was the number of one cycles we took to color C1. Plus two N12, that was the number, N12 was the number of two cycles we chose to color with color one. And each one of those two cycles eats up two elements. So that's why it's two times the number of those. Up up to K times N1K, all right? And so we chose from the one cycles, two cycles, et cetera, which is where this, which is where this uh, product comes from right here. Let me annotate on here. That's where this product right here came from. And then we simplified that and we got A1 factorial dot 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 AK factorial. Um, and then we had all of the, the individual N factorials and then the A1 minus the, it, through AK minus those N's factorials, okay? And that's starting to look like a multinomial coefficient already. And so what we did in the second part here is we said, well, okay, we want B2 vertices of color C2. So let's take care of that. We're gonna color B2 vertices of color C2. So I had go to the one cycles, I have some left from the first step, namely where we colored stuff color one. Okay, I go to the one cycles and I choose some number of those to color with uh, color C2. And we called that N21. So the first sub index is dealing with the color we're on. Okay, and then uh, and there were only A1 minus N11 one cycles left because there were A1 at the beginning. We used N11 of them for the first color, okay? And then you take some number of two cycles to color C2, and then some number of K cycles to color C2, et cetera. Okay, and we give names to the number that we take. And again, those numbers are variables. The number of things we take are variable, okay? And all of those choices are done from the cycles that remain after that first, uh, first color one step. And of course, B2, which is the total number we want to be colored C2, has gotta be, a similar sum to what it was in step one, N21 plus two N22, two, two, two because each two cycle contributes two elements that we're coloring, et cetera, all the way up to K in N2 comma K, okay? Okay, so then we take the count from the first step, which is this, and we multiply by all those choices we made in the second step. These are all just binomial coefficients, just like we did before. We cancel and we end up with this. And, it, and you start to see what's happening. It looks like the A1 factorials through AK factorials, that's always surviving in the numerator. In the denominator, it's like we're just canceling right before I had these A1 minus whatevers. Those ended up canceling at step two and they, they got replaced by these Ns. But then I have these A1 through AK minus minus N11, N21, et cetera. I'm subtracting off both Ns in each from each one of the AIs, okay? Each one of the respective AIs. So you can kind of see what's happening here, okay? Which is why I simply said, continuing in this way, we eventually arrive at this. Eventually, you're just gonna, you're not gonna have any A whatevers minus those. Those AK minus the Ns eventually is gonna go down to zero because um, it's a zero factorial because you have to use up all the, um, all the cycles. You have to color them something, right? Um, so you end up with this, and that is a product of multinomial coefficients. Okay? And, and it's got to be true that the sum of these things right here, which count, uh, right, what do, what do those things count? Those things are counting the number, like N11 was the, in the first step, how many one cycles we took in, in 2, 1, that's color 2, cycle 1, uh, that was the number of one cycles we took at the second step dot 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 m m1 is the number of one cycles we took at the nth step the nth color okay so in one one number of one cycles we colored with color one in two one number of one cycles we colored with color two etc and m1 is the number of one cycles we color with color m so of course we have to have this identity right here okay that the number of uh, 
the number of J cycles has to be equal to the sum of the N, N I J's, okay? Because um, we have to color every single cycle with, with a given color, okay? With some color. And similarly, as we already know, the Bs have to satisfy this, okay? And we had this like nice little tabular rendering of what's going on among all the Bs, the Ns, and the As. Of course, the key thing being that N is the sum of all these and the sum of all these, okay? And of course, here I'm saying that A1 is the sum of these, Right, uh, 2A2 is the sum of those, right? All of these are multiplied by K. So that's gonna be KAK, all right? So you have some nice summations going on. Of course, you know, you, know, you guys can see the equal signs here. The Bs are equal to those things, okay? So we have a nice tabular rendering of what's happening here. All right, and here's what I added to the notes, okay? And you can tell something big is coming because there's a giant gap at the bottom of this page. Okay, so I wanna show you what's going on in general. And essentially what, I'm, what I wanna do is uh, do the thing I said, namely let the ends be variables now. Like I could have chosen any number of one cycles up to uh, you know, B1, okay, uh, et cetera. So what does that look like when I do that? Well, uh, you'll see it by simply expanding the expression that we claim this is going to be equal to. So watch. Here's an expansion of the uh, cycle index polynomial term corresponding to the permutation pi. I replaced x1 with c1 plus dot 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 plus through cm, and then uh, placed x, replaced x2 with the sum of the squares. Okay x2 with the sum of the squares of the colors and then all the way through xk I replaced with the sum of the kth powers of those colors. And of course the cycle index polynomial term uh, we assumed had the form x1 to the a1, x2 to the a2, all the way through xk to the ak. And if you simply apply the multinomial theorem which we talked about last time, um, this first factor right here, okay so let me we carefully circle some things here. So this corresponds with this, okay? And let me do a different color here. This guy right here corresponds with this. And this right here, this last term right here, corresponds with this. All I'm doing is applying the um, the multinomial theorem to each one of those. That's it, okay? And I even use the same uh, variables that I did above, just so that you can see the connection. So like N11 plus dot, 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 plus NM1 is equal to A1, right? It's just the multinomial theorem. And notice, because all of, uh, for like X2, all of the colors are squared, notice that the powers, let me get the right color here, Notice that the powers here are all doubled, yeah, because all of those are being squared. And notice uh, down here that all of, because everything's raised to the k power, all of the powers are being multiplied by k, all right? And the reason that's the case, and this is the key, the reason you want to do that is because anytime you color one thing in there, we're talking about the number of things that are fixed by the action of pi, number of colorings that are fixed by the action of pi. In order for that to happen, if I color one vertex in a K cycle with a particular color, like color one, for instance, I have to automatically color K of them, that color, yeah, right? Everything in that cycle. So every time I color one thing in a K cycle, I have to color all the things that color in that K cycle. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. And here's a massive simplification that happens. Basically, you want to multiply out all those things, and that seems like it might be really complicated, but you just have to realize, you know, you do this, right? You take N11, N21, right? Uh, K or 2N12, and then KN1K. You kind of add those together on the power of C1, and actually, that's what we were calling B1. 
Okay. And similarly, uh, you know, dot, dot, dot in M1 to in, in M2, all the way to this power right here. If I multiply those together and kind of factor them out, that's what we were calling BM. We knew that that had to be BM. Go up and look at that table upstairs, right? Um, that's exactly what's happening. So I kind of factor those out and I kind of think of those guys as being fixed. Those were the fixed things that I had. And then when we multiply all this, these A's together, basically we just have a bunch of, see, look, look what I have down here. Um, let's see, look what I have down here, right? In, in I1 plus da, 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 that's equal to BI. And so I've used, I've kind of replaced that horrible looking sum when I combine the powers with just a simple variable bi, uh, bi okay? And of course, uh, you know, it's just gonna be the sum of all those things, okay? So I just sum over all possible of those n value things, and that is going to be the total number of ways to get, uh, to get a coloring that's fixed by pi, coloring that's fixed by pi and has b1 vertices of color c1, B2 colorries of B2 vertices of color C2, all the way up through BM vertices of color CM. Okay. And so that's the ultimate formula you end up with, which is what I was kind of challenging you to do, but I, I just wanted to come in here and do that. And then eventually you're like, hey, I see what's going on here. I can just compute the coefficient of C1 to the B1 all the way through CM to the BM, and I'm going to get the count right here. Right, this sum and right here that you see is exactly what we got above, and we just needed to sum over all possibilities to get the total count. And that's exactly the coefficient of C1 to the B1 all the way through CM to the BM right here. Okay, and we get it. That's what that's what I'm saying down here. This is this is the coefficient of C1 to the B1 all the way through CM to the BM. And that's amazing. That was just for one term, the pi term, co term corresponding to pi. But of course, getting the coefficient of C1 to the B1 all the way through CM to the BM from the other ones, I just have to add all those things together, all of those uh, coefficient computations. And that's where Burnside's theorem uh, comes from. Basically just adding together all of these, right, for various pi. Okay, up this, this guy up here, you know, uh, hang on a second, my mouse is acting funny right now. Um, this guy right here was just for one permutation, but we're like, okay, well, I could just do that same thing on all of the terms. And indeed, that gives us, not Burnside's theorem, I think that's what I said, Polya's enumeration formula. And namely that this thing right here is going to give us the pattern inventory that we want. Okay, and that looks, that looks intimidating. But I mean, you've done some exercises at this point that shows how to how to do this in practice. Okay, and that's it. That's everything. Look, I have the pictures right here from from above. But that is that's everything right here. Okay, that this coefficient computation is given by this, which is exactly the count that we needed. Therefore, establishing the Pauli enumeration formula. I promise it's all there. It's all uh, you know articulated right here in this document. Just wanted you to have that because they don't do it anywhere in the textbook. But it is something I think that you can understand even though the notation is a little bit messy. You can kind of see what's happening. I promise if you watch this again and again, if you go in here and read it, eventually it'll start to sink in. You have all the tools that you need, okay? All right, well, I've enjoyed it. Hopefully you have as well. Um, I'm really sorry that uh, you know, we're not able to be face to face right now. Hopefully this has been an okay uh, venue nonetheless. Um, I really wish especially that I could have interacted more with the, the seniors. I'm sorry to see you guys have to go out on a little bit of a, a downer note, but hopefully in some ways it's made it, it's made it memorable. Be praying for you guys, um, hang in there. Uh, we're almost done, we're down to the wire here, about you know, a little bit over a week and you're done. Okay. All right. It's been fun. Uh, take care. Uh, looking forward to seeing some of you again in the fall.